Here we are again. Another great day. Uh, appreciate you joining me. Absolutely, man. Back again. Every time, every Wednesday, guys, tune in. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, much knowledge to be dropped. We can't drop enough, man. You know, it's not it's, it's not enough for us to just learn. We have to come and we have to share, you know. And uh, that kind of ties us into the idea that we were thinking about for this podcast, or this episode at least, is uh, <clears throat> influence and impact and how you can influence people around you, how you can influence your environment, how your environment and how people in influence you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, no need for an introduction, but uh, do you want to go into like uh, like a reflect and kind of catch up a bit or do you just want to hop right back, right into the topic? Um, <clears throat> we can we can hop into a, a reflect real quick and mm -hmm. kind of go through our week and stuff. Uh, you, know, you had a pretty exciting one yourself. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty lit, man. Uh, turned up a little bit for my birthday, just a little bit, man. I don't I don't smoke or do drugs anymore, so it was just uh, had a drink, ate some food. Uh, had some good company, hung out with some friends. Uh, so yeah, it was fun, man. Dirty 30, 30s now, man. <laughs> Today, 30, wise, getting, getting watched every year. Mm -hmm. um, and pouring into this audience, you know, so. Right, man, you know, uh, and just trying to share the light and the love and the, uh, the enlightenment with y'all, with the youth, man. I'm still in my youth, though. I'm not old, man. And, and now that I'm 30, now it's time to start aging in reverse. So it's getting, I'm getting in, even better every year. With that, <clears throat> if 30 is three centuries, what are three major life lessons you would give someone out there right now? Mm. Three major life lessons. You kind of put me on the spot, man. I what know, do you mean, yeah, three yeah. major life lessons? There's maybe some things that you picked up along the way that, you know, younger Will or like, like if you could talk to your previous self and say these are some things that you're going to need to know or you're going to learn along the way that you prefer to like, you know, let your, that would help you out. Okay. Uh, I can say one is work out, get shredded, get into the best possible physical shape that you can get into uh, because... <clears throat> The, the more that you take care of yourself, the more that other people around you are going to respect you. You know, that's just, I think that's just a natural thing. You know, you look at somebody who's in great shape and you're like, man, you already have like an admiration and a, a respect for them, you know, and it's, they don't have to say anything. They don't have to do anything. They just show up and they have that presence and they have that confidence. So <clears throat> that's what I can say for someone, uh, my younger version of myself, get into the best possible shape. You're in your young, you're in your 20s. You're in your early teens, you're in your late 20s, you have all the testosterone that you need to build the mass, to get lean, to get shredded, um, so do it. Use your youth, you know, you, you're 20, you're 20 something, you can stay up. I remember when I was 20 something, I could stay up all night, sleep three hours and get right back to work, go back to school, do whatever I had to do. <clears throat> Hung over, drunk, not even really feeling it and still be able to perform. So instead of doing stuff like that, focus, you know, read, stay up, work on your passion, use that energy to get you closer to your goals, to hit the gym, to do stuff like that, make more money. Uh, number two, I would have to say is build a skill. Find a passion, you know, uh, and it's gonna be hard to just like say, oh, I'm, I'm gonna find a passion, but it's important to experiment, try new things, because that's what's going to expose you eventually to this thing that you can <clears throat> stay up all night doing, you know, like, for example, like video games, you know, that's something that's super fun for a lot of people and they can just stay up all night. I remember times when I stay up all night playing video games, <clears throat> but eventually you're going to expose yourself to something that's going to be really fun to you. And it's going to be like, you're going to lose yourself in that process of doing whatever it is. You're going to be like, man, I wish I could just do this all the time. Instead of going to work or going to school, I wish I could just do this certain task, whatever it is. For me, it was like exercising, going to the gym. Um, but for you, it can be anything, man. So I say to experiment, try new things, because that's going to expose you to your talent or expose you to that thing that you love to do. And from there build that skill, work on that skill. <clears throat> Number three, for the younger version of myself, I would say uh, become a great communicator. 
Work on your work on your communication skills. Talk to people. Become a social person. If you're a shy person, you know, it's gonna be hard for you to make money. It's gonna be hard for you to have relationships. It's gonna be hard for you to uh, express yourself honestly. So by studying, by learning, <clears throat> whether that's getting a sales job, uh, reading, you know, how to win friends and influence people by, uh, who is that? Uh, Dale oh, Carnegie, yep. you know, that's a great book. That's gonna help you. Uh, and just constantly be a social person, work on your sales skills, become a social person. So those are gonna be my three tips. Work out, get into the great, greatest shape that you can get into. Uh, build your skill, find your skill, find your passion and then build it, work on it relentlessly, and work on your sales skills, work on your communication skills. Boom. Now Ooh. it's dropped. So what's crazy, I was writing these down as you were saying them, mm -hmm. and uh, I was looking at the list, <clears throat> and it's these three base core principles, but these all kind of tie into the main topic of what we were gonna talk about today. Um, because that is essentially it, it's how you have impact in your community is, you work on yourself, you start working out, and if you start working out, you then have the energy to then do more things in your day. If you have more energy to do more things in your day, you are going to start to actually use that time to develop those additional skills. Those additional skills will become your passions. Those passions will then allow you to elevate yourself, become more valuable in the marketplace. And as you become more valuable, you're going to have to communicate your value to other people. So you got to learn how to communicate, communicate what that is, how it helps other people. So it all works together. And like these three values, like you said, drop. Yeah. So <laughs> younger version, younger dude, younger girl, whoever it is, do that shit. And uh, uh -oh, that's my call. Busy, busy man, man. Stay far. Let me go. I'm gonna call y'all back. So Ooh. they want some money. I'm not gonna communicate right now. <laughs> <laughs> not to communicate. Right. That's you communicating. Know. Yeah, you know. But uh Yeah, I didn't even think about the fact that yeah, it's gonna give to if you get in if you get in a great shape, and that's gonna allow you to do even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Again, um, appreciate those tips and like, I know those tips were for your younger self, but I know again, even myself, those are some major lessons that throughout my journey, I've had to learn in different ways and learn to incorporate. And again, realizing like when I am more active, like you shared a post on your story the other day, if you're feeling, um, a lack of energy go for a walk mm -hmm. like there's basic things like that you can go do to make yourself empowered when these feelings of like overwhelm and other things pop up mm -hmm. and they're very basic like just pouring into yourself in any kind of way go drink some water feeling this way feeling lack of energy fatigue whatever basic things on your story <clears throat> like so yeah, listen to a podcast or read a book. You know, that's something, too, is, like, you kind of have to, like, keep doing things. Like, you have to keep learning. You have to keep, you have to, like, relight the fire, you know. If I go, like, a couple weeks without, like, listening to something, I just kind of, like, yeah, start slacking on my diet and I start, like, doing other weird stuff and just, like, watching movies, just doing whatever. But once I, like, tie back in, all right, podcasts, they're talking about, these supplements and this diet that you can do and this workout routine and this how you sleep and all this type of stuff it like makes me tap back in like oh okay like man like i'm gonna take a cold shower today just because i heard someone else talk about it so mm -hmm. uh influencing yourself constantly I, I like that you mentioned um that it's a constant thing mm -hmm. like like i've also realized myself when i was in that six month time period when I was developing my business skills at night and working, you know, five jobs during the daytime and all this stuff. Um, 
I was constantly on the audiobooks. Every single day, every trip I was going from place to place, audiobooks were playing. I would be in the gym, audiobooks are playing, going on runs, audiobooks are playing. So like Yeah, every- you kinda put me on that shit too. Like, no music, audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? He's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> and then I started doing it. No music, audiobooks. Yeah, it, it changes everything. Yeah. Like and then you don't realize it. And then like one day, you know, I was like Maybe I'll just do some music, and then you start to slowly add in music, and then I felt like I was slowly getting less sharp. Oh, really? And, and like, yeah, because like I do, I do more music more often then. And like, it was just like, okay, maybe like I'm ingesting less helpful stuff, less things that are helping me move forward. Like, and I realized the impact of it. So like, I start to listen to more podcasts. Or something. Like, I mixed it up at that point because I was like so into straight up the audiobooks. And I mean, heck, it is value. Mm -hmm. It's tons of value, but a lot of times it's straight up value. Yeah, like you listen to a podcast, you get the jokes, you get yeah, the books be too much sometimes. (laughs) Like I remember, I was in the factory and I was like reading, and it's kind of boring. And it's like I need something to like live me up, like tell me something funny or what's going on in the news today or something relevant, and I'll turn on podcasts. Yep, yep. You know, I can jam out with podcasts. Uh, <clears throat> the books, they get kind of boring. But then uh, that's kind of a technique that one of my mentors taught me about. It's like uh, they use it. It's called the full immersion technique. Full immersion. So that's like say you're trying to get good at sales or some particular task. You nonstop for every waking minute of your day that you have free time, you're just listening to like sales training or uh, – coaching or whatever it is resources that's like information that's going to help you uh and just you co- constantly listening to it mm-hmm. uh, he was even going to the extreme of like he'd get like some waterproof headphones oh and then he'd take a shower even <laughs> listening to the <laughs> stuff yeah. like full immersion hmm. like 24 hours as much as you can ingest into your brain Jeez, probably he's yeah. like yeah that made me a really good salesman and i was like that kind of reminds me of what we're talking about it's like full immersion technique listening to just books or just sales training but this is kind of like we're just talking about just listening to like all all books no music so yeah i mean i i, I wish i would have taken it to like the level that's a pretty extreme like, right pretty yeah extreme. you feel good man <laughs> i don't have any waterproof headphones but yeah i the closest i did to that i had um like a cup and I put my phone speak like phone in that cup so it would magnify the sound because they don't have like a portable and then you can speaker. Take a shower. Yeah, yeah, so like I did that cuz like my speakers are not wireless. Uh they're for like, you know, you set it up and you listen. So I'm not going to like take my speaker from my room and put it in the bathroom so I can <laughs> listen to music, but I, I took the cup so I could try to hear it, but it's just not as loud. The shower is going and right. yeah, it's just not good. Yeah. So, but that's as close as I got to that. And uh, I also had it playing through the Sonos system. I'd have like the audiobooks playing while I sleep sometimes. Wow. Some, ones that, some that I already listened to. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But I'd have to make sure it was a book that I already listened to. So, like, I wouldn't be missing things. Yeah. You want to wake up in the middle of a chapter, like, <laughs> Wait, <why? laughs> how the heck did I get here? Right. <laughs> uh, or what's even going on? Um, but yeah, it, it it is all about immersion. Like people that want to learn multiple languages, when they go in, into a country or into places that only speak that language, it becomes easier to pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And for me, like, I started to listen to the people who I listen to on audiobooks in their YouTube videos, like Alex Ramosi. <laughs> and uh, I could see how it makes you a beast. Like listening to him just walking on stage uh, and talking to his community of people on his videos and whatnot, uh, he does add in humor. He does add in um, real world scenarios and a lot of value. Mm-hmm. And so I get it's more entertaining because he goes in between the educating and the like the fun jokes and stuff like that. Uh, it's changed how I communicate like I remember back in the day when I first got started and I was like the said door dashing and Jimmy John's and stuff like that 
literally from delivery to delivery, I'd be absorbing a whole bunch of things and like immediately applying it in the next delivery, you mm-hmm. know? Cause like, maybe it's like how to talk to, like I remember one time, uh, how to win friends and influence people and 92 uh, ways to talk to anybody and stuff like that. I just listened to both of those. And then I started to apply those principles going into restaurants, start talking with the staff, like 92 ways to speak to anyone by Mel Robbins talks about finding something of interest on a person and talk about it, ask them a question. So, you know, go into a place, find something, tattoo, watch, shirt, whatever, ask them about it. Hey, that's a nice X, Y, Z. And they start talking and then just kind of applying those little base things. And then, you know, then you learn 92, or, uh, how to win friends and influence people, you know, like be interested in the other pe- person. And then, so that obviously applies when you ask them about a certain thing that they're wearing or, or whatever. So like I said, just every delivery, I would like try to apply something in some kind of way mm-hmm. and just test my skills, level yeah. my skills up. Yeah, this stuff works, man. The stuff in those books works, it really does. I remember at like 18 when I first read that book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, I was just hanging around Kalamazoo, but I'd like do stuff that the book suggests, like just like be interested in people and talk to them, and they love that shit, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, <clears throat> really um, make me stand out. Yeah. Yeah. As a salesperson, or like, uh, just as a normal person, I just go into like normal businesses and just kind of like whatever I'm doing, like getting a service done or whatever. I just talk to them like. However, the book was tall, telling you, like, yeah, talk about their, like, something you genuinely, just start up a conversation, just talk to people, say hello when you walk past people, smile at people, you know. Uh, and I remember I was selling these vacuums, too. That's what really got me. It was kind of like, yeah, I was on a similar tip. Like, I would, like, read chapters of the book, mm-hmm. and then I'd, we'd hop out the van, and then I'd immediately start doing the techniques. Mm-hmm. And that stuff, got, that stuff was getting me some sales. So, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, was there more on your week that you wanted to reflect on, by the way? Uh, no, nah, that's that's pretty much it, man. I had a great time. Thirty thirty now. Uh, looking forward to continuing to grow. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Heck yeah. Uh, didn't really sign any new clients or anything like that. Uh, but still training, still coaching. So yeah, it's going pretty good. I like it. Heck yeah. Um, so to, you know, wrap up my week reflect so we can hop into uh, the main topic of the chat. But this week for me, um, as far as like <clears throat> tons of activities go, I was everywhere. <laughs> you know who they are, man. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I guess it's like, so when I reflect, it's just like thinking about all the things. It's like sometimes overwhelming. Um, you know, whether it be filming all the, all over the place, doing stuff here for Eden Cafe, uh, doing the workouts and stuff like that at the gym. I remember one day this week, uh, first time in a minute that uh, my workout like had me feeling it. Yeah. Like, feeling it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like you had to sit your ass down somewhere. <laughs> like after like after I was done, I was like. God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Tax. Need some milk. <laughs> right. You need some milk. You need to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> right. Man, dude. Yeah. Um I I was like went to the gym. It was busy as heck. So I found like a station on the pull up bar and uh, I pretty much stayed in that one spot for the most of my workout. Mm-hmm. And I did like well over a hundred like push up squat to a p- explosive pull up. I think I might have seen you doing that on Snapchat. Oh yeah. Like you just stayed at that station, then you hop down, you did like push ups, yep, yep. squats, and then you jump back up and you do pull ups. Yep, yeah, yep. that's a super set. Yeah, yeah. That, that was kicking my <laughs> dude. <laughs> like I was like, man, it, like uh because I, I started following this guy on Instagram who you follow too. I don't remember his name 100%, but he does all these pull-up variations. And like, 
uh, I think I had maybe tagged you in one of his videos or put it on my story, and he does these levels of pull-ups. So he has a regular pull-up, then a slight variation, then he does like some hanging L sets, and then he does like a muscle up and stuff like that, and then the shakers and all that. Level one, two, shakers. three, four, five. Shakers like you go forward. Oh, like on an the ice bar. cream. Yeah, yeah. Maker kind of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what he called them, shakers. I was like, oh boy, mm. that is just tough. Right. Stay on shake. <laughs> yeah. I'm like my shoulders cannot do that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, so I started watching his stuff, and then I got inspired to add in some some ab leg lifts while I do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that, I add in some leg lifts, and then I do, at the top of the pull-up, an explosive motion, but my knees are also L-sit, or like, are up. So when I explode, I'm basically exploding to make my knees, like, get close to the bar, and then come back down, catch myself, and then go down. So you're, you're jumping and doing like a pull-up? So, you're pulling up and then you're bringing the knees up well, as you do the pull up. Yeah, so I do an explosive pull up. So a muscle like, up you're doing? Basically a muscle up, but you explode. You do the pull up so much you explode. Yeah. And then your knees basically all like hit the bar. Wow. That <laughs> sounds impressive, dude. <laughs> I don't know if I can explode uh, that much. <laughs> uh, if you can't explode that high, you just explode up. And, yeah. You know, but. Uh, you know, some reps I'll get where I actually hit the bar. Some I'll like be like, <laughs> sounds yeah, it sounds <laughs> like yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty killer. Right. And uh, I just did that like the majority of my workout, and uh, people were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not so I don't even like working out and playing a fit. Like I kind of like it sometimes. Sometimes I'd be kind of shy, like. I know, I'm like, I'm not I really sure. want to watch. I don't want all these people to watch me do a handstand right now, but I need to train it. Right, right. Like, some days I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's like, I'm not trying to be here to showboat these skills. I need to practice these skills. Yeah, I think and, that's what everybody, that's what I think. Like, everybody's like, oh, you showing off. Right, right. <laughs> I think you're so cool. <laughs> it's like, I, like. <laughs> nah, man, I'm just trying to train it. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> Uh, like, especially for the human flag, there's not many places I know that have, like, the ring grip like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, or like, a good flag pull yeah, bar. It's yeah. hard to find. It is, very. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I got to go to the gym and do that. Right. And then you do it there, and everyone's like, he's breaking gravity. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so that, that happened at the gym that made me, like, Tired, tired. Yeah, <laughs> fatigued for like a day. Um, as far as clientele went, um, looking into, I had hit up a guy to do video editing for stuff like this, but then I had like didn't follow up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been Someone so busy. local? No, no, oh, online. Okay, okay. Um, and then so. I'd have to talk to them and all this stuff, and there's just a lot. Yeah, it is a lot to like. Yeah, like, I'm gonna have the AI tell them. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, then I started to uh, listen to a whole bunch of podcasts from, uh, you know, like, the group chat, mm -hmm. and uh, there was quite a bit of like, insightful stuff in there. Yeah. Um. One thing was kind of bringing to the topic of this chat, which is like how to have impact in your community. Because uh, as it is, we, we live in a society where those who have a following, and if they're following, then also believes that this person has authority or credibility, and that's why they follow you, they can speak they can print facts, whatever those facts may be. Mm -hmm. And uh, the common person can become similar in aspect of like becoming an authority, becoming someone of impact in their community, but it's gonna take some work. Yeah. It's gonna take basically like what you said earlier, you know, building yourself up through working out and becoming like a strong figure 
Like if you got a strong body, you most likely will have a strong mind. Uh, start building yourself, your skill set. If you build your skill set, and then you can appear as an expert because you've been working on that skill set for long enough, you know the it ins and outs like the back of your hand, that's how you build authority. Once you have that authority and you have the skill set and you look and fit the part, uh, then you have to learn how to communicate, like you said earlier, like the time spent to develop your skill, how your skill being at the level and tier it is is different than someone else who's just dabbling in all these little intricate things. And um, once you establish like a type of authority and have that credibility behind your name, you can then actually have impact and build a community up. Because if they see you as someone who actually is knowledgeable in, let's say, nutrition and fitness like you are, they see you as that person. If you're actually willing to then share information that helps them in those realms of thought, well, Will shared it. It must be, you know, factual or this must be something I should look up or like should research. Maybe it's beneficial to me because you've established yourself as that type of person. As an authority. Yeah, exactly. And so like, that's what I'm saying is impact. Uh, each of us, we already have impact in our communities. Uh, we're all influencers to a certain degree. You know, uh, you watch a movie and you go talk about that movie to all your friends and family. Then your friends and family goes and sees that movie based on your recommendation. You influence those people to make that decision because you have some type of authority in that relationship, some type of credibility. Your credibility being, they you watch movies in the past, you recommended movies before and I liked it. Maybe this is a movie that's similar. Same thing in any realm of endeavor we want to do. Like, my big thing about this topic is like, we hear a lot of people talking about a lot of social issues, but I don't necessarily see those same people putting any of the same type of energy behind actions and to lead by example and show people how to do these things, how to make these changes. Because that's really what it is when you become the person who does X, Y, Z to create that lifestyle, you become the example and then people follow in your footsteps. The reason we work out and train so hard is because we see people who are in the roles that we want to be in training and working out that hard. So it's like, that's the path. Yeah. Goku. Right. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, well, since we're growing up, Goku's doing jumping jacks and training and dying and getting brought back to life. And <laughs> like, he will not quit. So why should I? Mm -hmm. Come back stronger every time. <clears throat> yeah, man. Zenkai boost. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's just kind of, I went off on that. Yeah, those are all good points, man. Especially that last one that you said about uh, people who are just like talking. And they're just like talking. They're spreading influence. But their actions don't line up with what their message is. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people who are very influential in the world, a lot of people who have a lot of money, a lot of people who are activists for certain groups and, you know, politicians and all those things, they'll talk. Um, and, and they'll get the people rallied up and they'll get the money donated towards them but then they'll go and like spend their money on like a private jet or like money on things that doesn't stand for what they speak about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that is very important it's important to uh, lead by example oh yeah uh, and to allow your actions to speak louder than your words or as loud as your words were you by any chance uh, also hinting around like you know becoming super wealthy and financial uh, financially free getting you know private jets and then uh, becoming climate activists <laughs> yeah that's what you made me think about <laughs> yeah. you know uh, global warming yeah you know uh, it's like yeah we the sun's going to do this to the and it's like, all right, well, my money is not really going to change that. No, no. Not really. Yeah. It's like, give me your money so we can prevent the sun from being hot. Right. 
And then meanwhile, you're driving like a uh, Rolls Royce that gets 13 miles to the gallon and a private jet that does all types of damage and a uh, yacht that you pull up to the convention, the social climate change convention to. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a little uh, interesting when you put them in a perspective like that, you know. You're right, you're right. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Um, we, we must build our image up and then become very hypocritical. That's how you become successful, right? Apparently. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Uh, it's like, I should make my message instead of like, make yourself a priority by giving me all of your money and your power and your will. Just write it all over. You buy life insurance policies and put me as a beneficiary. Make yourself a priority. <laughs> <laughs> and then now it works. <laughs> I, was, I, I hope you guys know that's a joke. Don't oh, actually yeah. do that. Uh, but if you do, I mean, I appreciate it. But like, you don't have to do that. Yeah, if you give him some money, he's gonna give you something back. Of course, yeah, coaching, exactly. social media management for your account, something mm -hmm. he's gonna I'm, provide value for you. So. Exactly. I'm, I'm the type I need to provide value for what I get. Um, not the mm, just i i don't know privilege to it i guess right it, that's just not necessarily the role yeah but, absolutely but yeah that was uh that was funny because like i said i listened to that podcast and they were going ham on there uh for everyone you know tuning in and not sure there's a viral podcast going out there uh between some uh high net worth individual and uh yeah there's some clips that you guys should look up yeah i might even put the link in the video description why not yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh you want to go more in depth on like how to have impact in your community or anything uh, like that? yeah impact in your environment you know uh I think it's important to understand that we as individuals we all have impact around the people who we surround ourselves with, you know, uh, a lot of times, even little old me, you know, I kind of, uh, underestimate the amount of impact that I can have and the amount of, uh, the impact you have the ability to share whatever you want, you know, on your social, on your social media platforms, um, through like Facebook, through TikTok, through YouTube. So, uh, I think that it's important that you share, share what you have, share what value you have to give to the world, you know, before you leave, because it can definitely make an impact. Um, even if you, you don't even think that you are like an outstanding individual, you know, somebody else hearing your message, it might remind them like, yeah, I need to get back on track with my diet or yeah, this is good motivational stuff. So that's the reason why I do it. You know, I don't really... At first, I didn't really think that, yeah, I was making a big of an impact, but I, I'm starting to see it now. It's like, yeah, like I'll get people who reach out to me like, yeah, man, like seeing you work out on Instagram, like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's motivating me. I get I get motivated every time I watch your videos or I see you working out and it, it kind of gives me energy to do what. Uh, I need to do. I've heard people think like, man, like, yeah, I woke up on Saturday and I didn't feel like working out. And I thought, what would Will do? And it's like, man, that's kind of powerful that I have that amount of impact, even though I don't think that I do. It's like, yeah, I do. So uh, I'd say never don't under, don't underestimate the amount of your your impact and how you can affect those around you, whether that's on social media, whether that's on, uh, you know, Instagram or YouTube. Get your message out. Share something positive, you know, uh, to your family, you know, to your nieces, to your nephews, to your sons, to your daughters, to your uncles, to your aunts, to your sisters, to your brothers, to your cousins, to the people who you surround yourself with, to your friends. You know, something interesting was like when I first moved in with my cousin, like she didn't drink water. <laughs> you know, like a lot of people don't drink water. They'll just drink like a cup of coffee in the morning, you know, <laughs> get some orange juice with breakfast, get some milk or something. I don't know what they drink. They just don't drink water. You get some soda, some juice, and then time to go to sleep. And then they do it all over again. 
So it was like, like I showed up and then I'm drinking like a gallon of water a day. And then she started drinking water. She, I'm noticing like, oh, you're drinking the water now. Why is the water thing empty? Because you're drinking the water too now. We got to <laughs> fill it up. <laughs> so then we got to go through that. And then now she's at the point now where she's like starting to work out. She's got a gym membership, starting to work out. Yeah. It's like, I do all these things daily. You know, her seeing that, it must have some type of influence. You know, she's asking me questions about how to do this and how to do that. So it's kind of powerful to see the growth and the, uh, <clears throat> the share of the influence that I've been able to produce around those, uh, around the people who I surround myself with. So. Don't under, don't underestimate your influence and the impact that you can make in the world. I think that's something that we were put here to do is to kind of share this po positive message and to share uh, what works for you, especially for your children. You know, you want to give your children kind of like your belief system and your your methodologies to things and allow life to be easier for them because you pass down this me message, whatever it is, like your financial message or your healthcare message or your spiritual message, things that will help them throughout their journey and that they can pass down to their children so that your kind of, your legacy will live on through them and the messages that you've taught them. So yeah, that's, that's a little bit about like influence and, uh, don't be sh don't be afraid to share your influence with the world. I think that's what we were put here to do: share influence and to just kind of make the world a better place. I think that the world is starting to wake up. I think that more people are the uh, beginning to break free and to pursue freedom and to pursue things that make them happy in their lives. And the more that we can share a positive message to them, and the more proof of work that there is, the more people are re going to begin to resonate with that. And the, there's just going to be more people who are happy and more people who are free and more people who, who are successful and living the lives that they want to live. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 mo yeah, you mentioned a couple of great things that I want, that I wrote down here okay. and I wanted to go over. Big bet. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why I said wrote, you didn't write it. I wrote it, <laughs> but you, you said it. it. Yeah. <laughs> typed it. You, you, you said it. Um, so basically like, uh, there was a section that I wrote here, uh, share what resonates with you and facilitate the conversation. The reason that, uh, I wrote that was, uh, you were saying that you have social media and you have the ability to share basically anything on that social media. And we were talking about earlier, um, putting certain stories out there, you get X amount of views, people will watch it, you're having impact on these people in ways that you have no idea. And like you said, with your cousin, you know, she sees you in person, you know, and she's now seeing, okay, it's that easy to incorporate the habit. It's that easy to just choose this instead of that. It's that easy to make these changes because you're living that life and you're showing that it's possible. And each of us has the ability to share what resonates with us on our social media. There is a cost to doing that. And that cost is you may have people that ask you questions or say things back. <clears throat> you have to then use the tactics from to win friends and influence yeah, you people. you get to socialize now. Exactly. Yeah. You get to seek now to understand. <clears throat> if someone says something to a story that you post, I know for a fact that a lot of people, especially here in the Western world, we're more likely to think it's some kind of attack for some reason, <laughs> and then we get defensive. <laughs> so, uh, so seek first to understand, though. The person might be asking a question out of genuine curiosity, but it comes across like they're jabbing at you. Yeah, it can be hard to read things and messages and like, you know, social media posts. So, yeah, so the tonality is not there. Exactly. And then even if they might have some attitude, <laughs> I mean, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Like I had heck back uh, beginning or middle of COVID, I made that video on the cause of inflation mm. and using facts <laughs> and then the guy in the comments that wanted to argue because he just isn't as educated on the topic 
So like I understand that where he's coming from is from a place of a lack of information. This and guy so, works out. Oh yeah, they, he does work out. <laughs> <laughs> um, work out. See. See. <laughs> we 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 recognize. <laughs> you know, real recognize real. Right. So we see people putting in work. Um, but I could recognize though that the guy was coming from a place of not having all the information and then making his conclusion based on a lot of hearsay and other people who don't have the information or education like emotions yeah they you get so feelings. emotionally attached and then the logic is not logicking because you're not seeing it from a logical perspective but from an emotional one and then you make emotional reactions and emotional statements and then people who are looking at you and learning from you influenced by you hear your way of thinking and they believe it is truth and then that's how this thing gets spread around so like an abundance mindset versus like a poverty mindset is say like a parent a parental figure who is experiencing temporary poverty may speak in using words and language that teaches the child poverty words and poverty language and and how to think in a poverty mindset, in lack. Money doesn't grow on trees. We don't right. have enough. Right. In, all, always from a lack perspective rather than a how can you get and how can you become more valuable? How can you become a person who does gain X by doing things of value? Money grows from ideas. It, that's better than trees. <laughs> it doesn't take 150 years to grow. Right. <laughs> so... Uh, that's how I look at it. Um, but anyway, like we get these ideas that are passed on through the influence, never gets checked because it was someone that like you looked up to and you, you don't see fault in. Maybe again, parental figure, someone who is teaching you at a young age. They teach you how to see the world in a certain way. So then you grow up seeing the world that way and you speak the world to be in existence in accordance to how you see it. Mm -hmm. And because you're speaking the world that way, then people around you, you influence their way of thinking. So again, like kid who sees the world as I can become a better person, I can pour into my skills, I can become better, I can become more valuable. They try out for the basketball team, they don't make it. They ask themselves why they didn't and what can they do to then become better and more capable of making it and they start to go practice more and they go train more. The person who doesn't see the world as that way, they see the world as pretty fixed, fixed mindsets versus growth mindsets. Uh, they try out for the team, they don't make it. There must be something wrong with me, they say, and then they don't see it as they can become better. They don't see it as they can become capable of joining the team. They can train more to be better they can educate themselves more or any of it. And that's... I'm not talented. Yeah, like, that's... Work on it. Build the skill. This is the number two thing you talked about. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, as a human, you are malleable. I think a lot of people fall into this fallacy of, like, oh, I'm just not good at it, so I can't get good. Like, you can develop your skill. Put some reps in, man, and it works. You, you'll you get know? better. You oh, know? yeah. Spencer has a quote. He says, um... He who does the most reps looks the best. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Or he said that one day during training, and uh, it just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. So, you keep showing up. Eventually, you'll be able to show out. Yeah, yeah. So, but that, that way of thinking, again, uh, share what resonates with you. People will then come from their lens of perspective. They may ask you things. They may come across as... Uh, they're attacking you. Maybe they are because, again, lack of information and emotional reactions. Right. And then on top of that, so don't take it, like, you don't have to take that as an attack. Take the higher route. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Why are they coming at you this way? Like, what is their perspective? What is building their lens to be that way? And then I can use logic. Like, a lot of times when people come in and attack me from emotion, I can tell because, like, there's a lot of grammatical errors and stuff like that, too. But uh, you can tell. And then I ask questions. And then they tell me all I need to know. And then using all of what they've said, 
I answer each of those points with facts that backs up the truth. And then they're like, oh, they don't have any ground to stand on. They've given me all the ammunition to shoot down all of their arguments. And then from there, there's nothing left. Right. So if you're angry, it's just you choose to be mad. <laughs> like, it's a choice. It Everything is. in this life is a choice. Mm -hmm. And another thing I wanted to talk about, um, you mentioned that you inspire people in ways that you don't know. And uh, you're saying working out. I remember someone recently uh, told me that by seeing me doing human flags and pull-ups and stuff, it looks fun. And that inspired them to want to work out. And then, uh, you know, Joe Stetics, he recently passed, but he was very motivational and inspirational to a whole bunch of people. As soon as I was uh, in the Indian restaurant with you and you showed me, told me the news, like, I yeah, immediately... Yeah, my heart dropped. I was like, damn, that's so messed up. Was... He was just like, he seemed like he just popped up on my radar. I didn't really know him. Maybe I'd seen him for a couple years, but I didn't really pay too much attention to him. Yeah, yeah. But, man... Yeah, he was, for me, like, on my radar, I saw him, like, when I was doing the drop shipping, he was always, like, modeling the clothes, <laughs> like, from the suppliers. And then so I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. And I look and find him on Instagram and stuff, doing the alien gains and everything, like, it's really just, killing it. Right. He had the rippling muscle disease. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. And then uh, my buddy, uh, Jared, he found his videos and started watching them, and then he got inspired and motivated by it. So as soon as I heard the news, one, I first thought it was fake. I was like, yeah, there's no way. Right. And then... He's so healthy. Yeah, then everything else hit after. Um, and then I was like, I immediately knew, thought of like people that as soon as they see this news, they're going to be like in disbelief and they're going to be like, whoa, what? And then immediately I started getting phone calls and texts like, yo, bro, do you see Joe? What happened? Like... Yeah. Oh yeah, you're getting yeah. calls and texts from yeah, people. Yeah, I did. I did because he has that much impact. He didn't even. He never met these people. Right. And like you know, just people that we know here in Grand Rapids, and that's crazy, it. man. Yeah. Um, and uh, I had heard that uh, he got his like triple, quadruple vax, like recent. Really. And they're I, saying that might be the reason why he died. I didn't know that. Dang. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no about that. <laughs> oh, but instead of steroids, he's obviously on steroids. Yeah, he he like he. I like how open he was about everything because right. he was talking about how he was on a lot less than he used to be, of yeah. course. And so, like, I mean, hell, like compared to a regular cycle, from what I'm hearing, they say that people who are starting their cycle use more than he is that he was in that time of his life. Yeah. Because he was like just using it just to kind of maintain or right. whatever rather than to gain. Um, another thing is, um, you know, I've also realized that building a business, somebody was telling me the other day that, you know, at first they heard about how I was like, you can monetize your talents and skills. And they saw me get started. You know, I just freshly left working at the bank, quit, and just went to do this entrepreneur thing. And they're like, what? <laughs> and so over the months that happened, then they start to see that I'm still doing it. Then they see a year in, I'm still doing it. They see two years in, I'm still doing it. Then they start to think they're like, he's been telling me all this time that it's just been that way. And then the, the wheels start spinning and then they start to do some research and they start to watch some videos. And then so that little seed of in influence got them to want to like start becoming more self-employed, like doing things in that route. It, it took some time, took some belief to build, mm -hmm. but the impact was still there. And it just took a while to, for that seed to grow. Amazing. And then appreciate that. And then I was just thinking about a time frame back in the day when I was like working at Planet uh, and Mike and I um, would do like 16 hour shifts. Cause you know we'd have our regular eights, and takes then takes me back to mine. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy, like you know, hardworking individuals, like um, young you know. and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's, we're, we're gonna make the some grind. money. We're the overtime. <laughs> I, I had recently, like this week, actually looking back, I had saw like a Snapchat memory from like six years ago that was showing uh, a pay stub that I had 
for like the Fourth of July mm-hmm. weekend, and uh, it was fifty plus, like fifty five hours of. I think regular time plus like 20 something hours somehow of overtime premium and then like holiday pay. And I was like, pretty cushy. That felt good back then. Now I'm like, but that was a lot of labor versus like I can think and have freedom. Sell and, some shit. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, accidentally sold more than I made in a month. <laughs> like, so. I don't know. It's just funny. Um, just looking at things differently now. It's a different value for that same time. Yeah. But in working those hours back then, I was influenced by how hard of a worker my dad is and how much overtime he picks up. And then by me having the opportunity to pick up overtime and then have seen him do it, I started to do it. And then it inspired people like Mike and other coworkers to want to pick up overtime. And want to pick up more hours. They're like, Tyler's up to fifty plus hours this week. Let me let me get some hours. Like, yeah. So it was like we were grinding and pushing each other. Uh, and then, um, heck, even once we built the mastermind, like you know, now it's the impact of we come together, we share ideas, we then go back to our communities and we talk to our peers about what we, our our individuals all come and bring to the table what we learned, and then we're spreading that sphere of influence in more ways than we know. And then they're going to take that to their circles and talk, and they're going to take that, and it just spreads really quick. Mm -hmm. So you never know how much impact you actually have. You having one conversation with someone could be the difference between them continuing life or not. That's deep. Yeah. I've had that too uh, a while back. Uh, it was back when I was doing more of the, uh, the getting started with like Snapchat videos and motivational stuff. And I started right. posting things. I had a buddy um, say one of the messages that I had put out there um, made him rethink about some he because he was contemplating, you know, uh, suicide. The big O. A big O, yeah. And then, uh, I know we got a censor on Yeah, you might not want to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, He's contemplating that. And uh, he saw the message and, uh, you know, he he said at first he was angry, like, it triggered him. Like, it got, it was like offensive to a way because it's like, the concept is so simple. How can you say my suffering is a making of my own thinking? You know, very stoic. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but then he thought about it more, read my captions, looked at more of my content, and started to really then see things differently. And he messaged me, just saying like, "Appreciate it, keep it up. You, you definitely you saved me, you know, and stuff like that." So, wow. Yeah, it was impactful. And that was just a couple of years ago. Yeah. And like I said, I didn't know that people were even paying attention because they weren't like liking it or anything. They're just watching. A lot of people are like uh, ninja watchers. Yeah, they yeah. Just chill and they just watch you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, but it's just a blessing to have the ability to make those impacts. And like, it's like you were saying, like we're sleeping on our impact all the time. We don't realize how much we have. And to our watchers out there, like everything that you're saying matters. You're influencing people in a lot of ways. The only thing that exists in this reality is energy. Matter is made up of energy, vibrating at a different rate of speed. And so the energy in which we think and speak and act is all of the same source. You have impact. Everything we say, do, think, spreads in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's deep, man. Kind of makes me think about, like, when I first got started, like, on Snapchat, uh, I would go for, like, these mile runs and I'd just be talking shit like, yeah, I'm going for a five mile run today, yada, yada, yada. Post the five mile run, this and that. Uh, I just kept doing it. And I didn't really get, like, yeah, it would get a little response every now and then. Uh, but then I remember I had stepped out, I went to the club with some friends, like celebrating a birthday. And then I see the girl, I see one girl and she comes up to me and she's like, hey, like, I just want to thank you for your videos that you posted on Snapchat. 
I used to watch your videos and then I'd be like kind of jealous at first and I'd be like, man, well, if he can do it, I can do it. So then she starts running and starts getting in shape. And she's like, yeah, I lost like over 70 pounds or something crazy. And I got into the best shape of my life. And I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. And then she's like, yeah, you're like my hero. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So it's never, you know, don't discount your work, man, because there's a lot of people watching. They might not respond to your stories or respond to the messages or whatever, but uh, you're definitely influencing them. You know, everything that passes through your eyes, passes through your ears, you're being influenced by. So uh, that's just... Uh, a story of influence and i i kind of got on that path just from watching like kevin hart mm. that's a lot of stuff that he was doing he was going for running at the time he kind of signed this deal with nike and they were doing this running thing i was like you know he can run i can run so i started doing it too and mm. i was like yeah let me see if i can share a similar message and share stuff like on social media like how he's sharing it you know so uh yeah, your your work pays off, man, and you keep putting that message out there. Eventually, people are going to start to resonate with it, and it's going to start to affect them. So hopefully, put out positive things. Stay away from the negative. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, as the yin has its yang, we cannot avoid negative situations, but we can make sure that we try to maintain a positive outlook. True. Yeah, and that kind of brings me to, uh, like, one last point that I can say is like I try to influence my environment so that it's positive. You know, if I walk into the room, I want to say what's up to everybody. I want to make sure I have a smile on my face, make sure I'm greeting everybody. Hey, man, nice hair, nice outfit, so that everybody's in a, a positive mood because if they're not, then that's just going to affect me. If they're mad and salty and woo, woo, looking down and stuff, I'm not going to feel great. <laughs> you know, it's going to affect me. So I put out that positivity into the world so that I can receive it back. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, heck, this might be getting, making this super long, but I mean, the concept of karma, people can look at it super deep or you can see it as the immediate return effects or like the give and take, the cause and effect, the actions and consequences of our actions right like like you said you go into a room if you're going in and you have negative energy you're carrying a conversation that made you feel angry in your head you're not letting it go you've got a sour face in your like on you're looking like you got a grimace and all this stuff and like you're not a pleasant person to be around you walk into a room you're gonna bring the energy down like, it is, that's exactly it. your causation of bringing your negativity in. If the other people around you don't have the self-awareness of what, what the heck is that? Like, <laughs> they're going to be affected by it. Yeah. And, and it's going to bring the mood down. If it brings the mood down, you're potentially going to pick up on their lack of energy, build on top of your lack, and it's just going to be a negative it's gonna spiral. It's going to be a whole bunch of lack. Whole bunch of lack. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of assimilation. You can feel the energy. Like I remember in my early youth, I, you know, I was bright and bubbly and kind of fun, and I get around, get get into a room with some friends, and we're just cracking jokes and yada yada, just having a good time, man. And then one girl walks in, and then she's like, "Where's this and where's that? This is that bad. This is that." And then you can just kind of feel like the energy in the room just kind of shifts. Like we were all cracking jokes and laughing and she walks in and she's just like, we all just kind of. <laughs> and then I kind of hang out for a good 10 minutes or so. I'm like, all right, you know, it's time for me to go. So you guys have a good day. <laughs> be back. <laughs> I got to keep my positive vibe. So I hit the road, man. I'm just kind of smiling like, man, that's crazy. You can. You can feel how to get out of there because you can just feel the energy uh, that people bring. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. uh, so, yeah. And, and then to also add in, you know, to add on to that, to make sure that you pay attention to what's influencing you, you know, is are you being influenced by the negative? Are you being triggered by things or... You, you're putting yourself in a situation where you're allowing your energy to be drained by these energy vampires and these 
individuals and things that uh, are not holding the best interest for you. If so, make sure you get around, get away from that, you know, stay away from that, get around from that, because that's, it's just going to make you, it's going to bring your energy down and it's going to influence you to do the wrong things, to say the wrong things, to think about the wrong things, you know, that's the music you listen to, that's the, uh, the friends and the, the social people that you hang around, your social environment, you know, your family, so try to stay away from them as much as you can, try to influence them to be positive and to cultivate your environment for success, to program your mind with the right things, with positive messages. So that way you can, you can input the positive and then you can output the positive as well. Mm. That part, it's, you had mentioned being aware of things that are controlling or influencing your thinking, which is then gonna inevitably influence your actions. And I, I, I've made a series like a couple years ago on TikTok talking about thought habits and action habits. I mean, if you think about it, if you're aware of the things that are influencing your thinking and you realize that however you are thinking is going to dictate your actions, you can do certain actions to produce a certain mental state that is then going to get the most optimal out of yourself. And one time I had went over, I was going to film for Spencer. I, I think it was like a year or two ago, probably two years more now. Uh, and uh, I was pulling up and he had told me that like, he was like, oh, yeah, thanks for uh, waiting in the car or whatever, because I waited for a sec. He just said, chill for just a moment uh, and then come, come on over. Uh, waited in the car for a sec, came out. He was like, yeah, thanks for waiting. I was just trying to get into the right state. So really good at like the mental like you realize that in order to perform on camera and do these things right here in this state like I, let me cultivate the right mindset let me get into the zone and then you know there are certain actions you can take like that's why people have morning routines the morning the act of doing these actions in this way will produce the best mental state for you however you know you want to make it where it's like the state change is something you can create without external stimuli usually. Because if you're always dependent on needing a coffee to get that mental state or needing something external to produce Some drugs. The, yeah, yeah. I need <laughs> this, this drug, this vape. <laughs> Some this nicotine. <laughs> nicotine and uh, hit the dab or whatever <laughs> to produce a, a mental state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're a slave you to the tool. Yeah. Maybe you could do some meditation, you know. Mm -hmm. For me, I like to get hyped before a sales call or, like, I'm going to do a consultation with some clients or some shit. I'll turn on my favorite song, oh, crank yeah. that shit, get hyped. I'm going to go out to the club, talk to some girls. Get turn hyped. some music up, get hyped, you know. So, yeah, you do have the power to, like, change your state. Get into a good state before you do something important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just being aware of it, like... Find your little cues, figure out what you can do, learn to be aware of when you're pulling certain ways and just try to find non-interfering things that you can do to create that state. Mm -hmm. The harder it is to do, like, you know, you're in a crowded room on stage, gonna deliver a presentation to over a thousand people. Mm. Can you stand there and hit your vape to get into state? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing up. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, so you got to be able to like, all right, let me go to a place that I'm calm. Or let me, you know, go to a place where I'm comfortable, like where I'm comfortable delivering what I got to do. You know, right. just perform. Visualization. Yeah. Envisioning, in, envisioning yourself giving the speech and it going perfect. Mm -hmm. the, cloud, the crowd paying attention and them clapping, laughing yeah. at your jokes. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you will start to just perform better. You also shared something on your Instagram story today that was like, it's, it's using the, the visualization. It says to be with the muscle when you're working out. And it kind of ties into what we just said. 
but it was a graphic of a guy working out doing a pull up or an archer pull up, and uh, it Thinking said about the back muscles. Yeah, if you think about the muscles you're contracting and you feel them out and you're mentally visualizing them getting stronger and stuff, you're more likely to hit the right things and and get a better workout than the guy who is <laughs> visualizing himself posing. <laughs> Just doing random shit. <laughs> yeah. Just like, uh, or, you know, maybe you're not thinking about yourself posing and doing random shit, but you're thinking about, like, what you're going to eat for dinner, what you're going to, what protein you're going to get, or random other shit. But, like, yeah. keep your mind focused on the action you're doing. Be present. That's it. Big facts. Especially when it comes to training. Target. Mm-hmm. Think about the muscle you're working as yeah. you're doing the exercise. So, uh, any other uh, words that you want to offer? Though? Like, this is hit on a lot of... Yeah, we went in. A lot of influence. Hopefully, this influences you to go out there and make the world a better place to share this message, to share your influence and how you can impact the world. Absolutely. And, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. Um, a great way that you can make the world a better place and have impact is... If any segment of this stuck out to you, feel free to capture that moment, screen record, download the video, get that moment and share it on your story, Instagram, TikTok, make a reel of it. It's going to impact other people in ways that you don't know. So if you can do that, you'll be spreading the positive message that impacted you in a positive way. So make yourself a priority somehow, some way today. I like that. It also helps us. It does, it does. It does. <laughs> your, your favorite local influencers. How about that? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, with that, man, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Professor Ill Will, CEO of New Wave Coaching, go out into the world and be the wave of change. If you guys need nutrition, coaching, fitness coaching, feel free to reach out to me. And Tyler Wellness here, helping open-minded individuals make themselves a priority and learn that they don't have to stay in a nine to five. They can monetize their talents and skills. So if you're a person who fits in that window category, who wants to escape the matrix, do something for themselves, become more valuable, monetizing their skills, hit me up. Absolutely. All right. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.